NE Precision was set up in 2005 by two brothers and in the last three years have invested in three wire EDMs and today we're going to find out why. Eamon Farrell here from NE Precision. Um, myself and my brother Noel uh, formed the company back in 2005. We currently have uh, three billion comprising of 20,000 square feet. Um, we specialise in three axis, four axis, five axis machining, specialise in turning, uh, mill turn, uh, sliding head work. We also uh, specialise in aerospace, the aerospace industry, uh, medical device, pharmaceutical, automotive, uh, food industry, uh, general, general engineering, we're a subcontract uh, machine shop. Uh, and we're based here in Longford, in the, in the middle of Ireland. Uh, we've recently invested in uh, three Mitsubishi wire rotors. The first wire rotor came in August 2019. Uh, the reason that we invested in the Mitsubishi wire at the time was we were uh, subcontracting out a good bit of wire roading. We had looked at a couple of uh, projects in the medical and the oil and gas which warranted us uh, buying the Mitsubishi wire uh, and literally six months after that we invested in the 1200 uh, wire and uh, last June we've actually bought a third wire rotor uh, so they've, they've actually worked out really really well for us we, we specialize in lights out machining uh, particularly you know uh, along the weekend when there's nobody here um, so they've, they've really worked out well for us so I suppose uh, predominantly we would have done an awful lot of uh, you know, five axis machining on medical device parts, three axis machining, and even milling, milling small slots and trying to drill small holes and this type of stuff. And really and truly from the accuracy of the wire rotors, you know, down to, to two to three microns accuracy uh, and getting round holes and getting parallel sides, uh, as opposed to maybe putting on the mill, struggling with hard material, really trying to, you know, machine parts after hardening, whereas obviously putting them on the wire after hardening, you're wiring, you're getting parallel sides, you're getting an excellent RA finish, uh, and again, you know, just running while, while it's unmanned, not breaking milling cutters, which is a huge cost, and, you know, just, just really, really got us thinking completely differently as to, you know, predominantly we would have always looked at milling, turning, milling, turning, and now obviously we've introduced the Mitsubishi wires. We, we just look at things totally different. Suppose we did look at various Mitsu various uh, wire rotors, you know, and obviously pricing them out. I suppose one of the main reasons when we went with Mitsubishi was that, you know, ETG are based in Newbridge in County Kildare. They're literally an hour and 10 minutes up the road and to have service on in Ireland on the ground to us is, is a huge benefit. And Jamie and Carlos, you know, they came on board you know, to really, you know, show us the benefits of going to Mitsubishi uh, EDM wires. And I suppose one of the main things that we're, we're trying to push here within the business is Industry 4.0, and the Mitsubishi wires have all of that on board. So basically, you know, if the machine stops, we can get a text message or an email saying, yeah, listen, the wire is down, or something wrong with the wire while we're at home at the weekend. So that's one of the main reasons. It's great to have people on the ground in Ireland to be able to pick up the phone, you know, call and say, listen, we've got a problem. They're here within, you know, an hour and a half. Yeah, I suppose we have a broad range of industries here that we, 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 we um, work with in N&E, predominantly aerospace right through to, to medical. So these are actually the wire EDMs we've just heard about. They purchased their first one in 2019, and that was the MV2400R. After that, they purchased a 1200R and the most recent investment is this new 1200R, which is actually the new version. So it's faster, you can do, you can get a better surface finish with less cuts. So all the technology is, they're always investing in the new technology. Now, you're actually running these machines. So what was it like? Did you run wire EDMs before you got onto these? So before the, this machine came here in 2019, and before that I would have had absolutely no wire EDM experience whatsoever. It would have been all 
CNC milling that I would have done before this, as I trained as a tool maker. So in 2019, the first machine came, and with a little bit of training, we got two, three days max training, and now they're just so easy to, to pick up and to, to get going on them, you know. So what was it like? Obviously, you just said you were you were all CNC milling. So what was it like going from the jump from CNC milling to a wire EDM? Yeah, to start, you'd be wondering, <laughs> is this for me? But when you see the difference in what you can do on a wire and what you can do on a mill, now the, you know they're two totally different machines. But what you, the different parts that you can make on an EDM machine, it, it's crazy. The, the, the tolerance you can hit, the size of the parts that you can get onto these machines. You know, the difference in taper cutting, we can cut up to 15 degrees. Um, uh, well, we actually spoke about the taper cutting earlier because you were saying that it was quite a... 15 degrees over something 10 mil doesn't quite look like anything, but what what was the part you were saying earlier that it was it was quite a big part? Yeah, the, the part was probably two on the bit high. It was on the 2400, and we had to put a, a, a 15 degree the whole way around it. So you can imagine, on the other machine, it's 200 mil high, 15 degrees. So the two heads was completely, it just looked so wrong, you know? And it, it was absolutely machined to perfect, you know? The, it worked a treat, but you'd think you were doing it wrong and you were kind of praying, is this going to be right? But with the EDM wires, everything is now, it's, it's always right, to be fair to it. But, you know. Well, we, we spoke about this earlier. We, 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 neither of us would have thought that would have worked, but we actually have some parts here. But before we get onto the parts, I just want to I just want to look at this because obviously you're cutting all these parts out of one plate now. Yeah. But how would you have done that before? So we would have probably got obviously the material a lot smaller, and we would have did them one at a time. So if I'm able to get them out of it, we would have put that up on a machine. The material would have been a lot obviously. Smaller that, but just a few mil bigger than this, held it on the bottom, machined around the outside, drilled our holes. The problem with this part is the tolerance is, tolerance is very tight on these two slots. And this is three, three or four stainless. So if you try and mill this out, the problem that we were having is that the parts we were losing our tolerance. Because it, because it's broke, these legs were moving out and we were losing our tolerances. So when we got the wires, we changed it over. So we're doing them in these plates now. So we started off by just stacking them, sorry, nesting them. Uh, so we pre up the plates. We have a, a hole starter. So put that back in there again. So first off, we put the plates up. We do up our DXF, which we just put three little holes in here for start holes and another one here. So. We start the wire and obviously the holes, and we wire around these and then around the whole part. But then we said we'd take it one step further and we started to put multiple plates on top of each other. So now instead of getting just one plate, probably we'll be taking in, in and around the guts of an hour and a half. So we could use the multi-work, but then we said we'd go up the way. So instead of having an hour and a half program here, an hour and a half program here, now we're stacking them up. So we're doing five, six, 10 plates at a time. And we're getting multiple parts in an awful lot less time. And they're right every time they come off. Well, actually, you've just you've just mentioned something there which I think we need to touch on is the multi-part system as well, because were you doing any lights out running before you got these wire EDMs? Not really, no. It's very hard to be, like, before we got the EDMs, on the three axis machines, maybe the five axis we would, but on the three axis machines, it's very hard to get the right part to get running. And like the way we run here now is we're able to run nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know. So how, how has the wire EDM helped you with that? Because you, you mentioned this earlier, it was the, um, the multi-part system. So you can set that up to run full weekends. Yeah, so sometimes we don't always have uh, a job that will run with massive hours in it. So what we've started to do is we set up multiple parts around the whole way around the table. Um, and it doesn't matter, different parts, different jobs, different customers, different heights, it, it just doesn't matter. The machine, once you have it set up right, you can have, once you have your coordinate system and all the right datum set, the machine will just do one job, finish it, go on to the next job, finish it, 
go on to the next job, finish it. That must, must, must make it a lot easier for you and I bet that's quite a nice feeling to leave the machines running on a Friday, come in and all your parts are finished on a Monday morning. Just about to say that, yeah. <laughs> it's a, when you come in on a Monday and you get so much work over the weekend and you know, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a good feeling to see it, as well as... Well yeah, essentially, it it's actually free machining as well because there's nobody stood in front of no it. No one stood here, yeah, no one stood here. Now, we have a, we've got a few parts here and there's, there's a few parts Chris won't be able to actually, there's one part Chris won't be able to see but can you can you can you actually talk me through this? Because that is absolutely tiny. Yeah. So this is a nozzle for a customer, and the hole there's actually a hole. I don't know. Can you see it? But there's a hole going through the centre of it, and its finish size is 0.4. So it has to be very accurate. So we ended up uh, starting a hole in it with the wire starter, hole starter, um, with a 0.1 electrode, and then we feed 0.1 wire through it and we wired out the, the hole in the centre of it. Now let's be honest, could you have done that on your miller? I, well, you could have done it on a miller, but could you have done it as easy on the miller? Definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely. Now, this is the next part I'd like to talk to you because as well as having a slot straight through the middle, you've also got this like pitchfork sort of shape here. Now, how hard would that have been to do on the millers before the wire? Yeah, well, we did try this part on the mills before before we obviously, you know, we decided to bring it to the wire and we were getting these that they were just breaking off and that we were getting an awful chatter here and, you know, they were just pinging around the place and we were like, that's a non-runner straight away. So we brought it up to the wire and the wire had that done in probably 10 minutes and it was perfect. And then obviously that's, that's just made that life a lot easier, but... But then what about the slot in the middle? Because that's quite a small slot to try and get an emerald in. Yeah, yeah. So we just, we could just, same again, we've made up a fixture to locate at the right angle. Uh, hole starter again, popped it up on the wire. And there you go. And that obviously is, it's, it's a really nice part. And as I don't know if Chris can see inside, but you've got quite a nice finish on the walls as well. So um, we've actually got two more parts to look at now. Pardon D2, doesn't look very difficult, looks like you could do it quite easily on a mill, but it, that's not really the, the, the situation, is it? So no. what, how would you make that on, a, on your wire compared to like on your miller? Well, in the mill you'll have, obviously you can see there's very, very tight corners in here, so you'd have multiple operations to try and to sharpen out them corners. Um, and it's just multiple operations and you're doing one at a time. So to, to put someone at that job, it, you know, it, the, it take a long time to just get, even though it's a, it looks like a simple part, but it'll take a long time to get it over the line. So we obviously move this to the wire as well. And so we bring the, the part to thickness first, and it's able to be ground, uh, finish size, and then goes up in the wire, and we, st we nest them into a plate. And now the beauty about this is sometimes we, we were machining parts and then sending them out for hardening. But now we have the option, obviously, to, to send the whole plate out for hardening. And when it comes back, we can now machine it. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than trying to hard mill stuff, is there? We've all been there. So this is the, the last part. And this is actually, uh, this is not just one part. This is obviously multiple parts. So you, you can look at this and say, yeah, you, you, could, you could mill each part of this. But how is the, how is the wire made this part easier for you guys? Yeah, so that's a good example. I know it's multiple parts. Uh, all in kind of put together but when you see the amount of tolerance and it's on that part alone on all them parts the dowels everything has to line up it's, a, it's part of a medical device uh, machine um, it just the tolerance on it is crazy and we have all your dowels all your bearing fits everything so when we now put this going on the wire and we take off these parts they just fit together like a jigsaw there's no is it going to fit is it not going to fit it just fits you know and I think that's such a, a such a great statement about the about the wire that you're not thinking, is this going to fit? Isn't this going to fit? I, thank you for that. That was brilliant. So I, you're not you're not sort of thinking, will this fit? Won't this fit? Every time you get a part off the wire, you know it's going to fit perfectly and exactly how it needed to be.